Welcome to this special three-part project showcasing our new version 11.5 software features. Here at Vectric, we're super excited to have recently released updated versions of Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire. To help demonstrate the updates, new tools, and improvements, we have put together a set of three projects that work alone and can be stacked together to make an even more impressive conversation piece. This second project will highlight what's new in VCarve Pro and Desktop, building on a feature set we showed you in the first project. Remember, as a vCarve 11.5 software owner, you have all the Cut 2D features, and if you're an Aspire 11.5 customer, you'll have all of that and what you'll discover in the third project. Memories are an important way for us to remember special times in our past, and many of us used to rely on printed pictures to prompt conversation and reflection. Nowadays, countless photos are stored in the cloud or on your phones. Some of those memories have become even more important over the last few years. When a frame is used to house a photo, its main goal is to protect and to add some dimension. In some cases, even to add to its story. In my case, I wanted to frame either a photo I took while climbing to the top of Snowden here in the UK and add in some 3D content to tell my story. As I was thinking about it, why not add the frame to the 3D map we created in the first video? Let's look at how we can create an Explorer frame using clip art that came with our version 11.5 vCarve software. This video will show how we have used new version 11.5 features to create this project. It's not a step-by-step -step project tutorial, so it will be helpful if you're comfortable with the version 11 features of your software. Okay, this is a brand new instance of version 11.5 of vCarve Pro, and I've already gone ahead and done some really basic vector work. So over the outside of our frame, we've got the inside of the frame that we're going to cut right through. So this ends up being a window so we can see a picture or whatever we want to put behind us. And in these three areas of our frame, we're going to add in some 3D content to help tell our story. And this piece at the bottom, the circle area in the middle, we're going to use later on for some further customization. So the first thing we want to do is tile our views so we can see our 3D view and our 2D view at the same time. And let's go over to our clip art tab and see what we can find for 3D clip art. Now I've gone ahead and downloaded all of the free clip art that comes along with vCarve um, and, it's made, and made sure I had them all installed. So I have all the clip art available to me. If I go ahead and take a look at the animals clip art, I like this duck right here. So I'm gonna double click on that and it'll pop right into the center of my 2D and my 3D view. Now I can go ahead and position that. I want it to be here up in the top left-hand corner of this window and I can slide it into place where I want it to be. I can size it down. I'm using the vector profile there to, to tell where I want my duck to kind of end up being. And I don't mind for right now if his wings or parts of him stick outside of that vector because we're going to go ahead and take care of that in a bit. So he looks pretty good right about there. And now what I'd like to have is um, some clouds in here. Now I've looked through all of the clip art that comes for free uh, with my vCarve software and there aren't any clouds, but if I take a look underneath objects and people, the top of this beer mug, the foam on it looks a little bit like a cloud. So if I go ahead and double click on that, it'll again, it'll pop right into my 2D and my 3D view. And then we can have a look at one of the great new features of version 11.5. As I drag this beer mug around, you'll see that as it interacts with the duck, we get instant feedback on what's happening. This wasn't the case in version 11, but in version 11.5, it makes it really easy to get the composition you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rotate this around in my 3D view, upside down. And we'll go ahead and position it up here somewhere. And we're going to go ahead and pull this out, stretch it out. Them to where I want it to make it a little bit wider so it looks more like a cloud. That looks pretty good. Then I want to go ahead and copy that. So hold down my, contr my control key while I drag. Then I can go ahead and I can get a second one. And I can put that in here where I want it to be. Now you may have noticed in our 3D view we have this brand new handle here. So seeing as I have a piece of 3D clip art selected, if I go ahead and left click on the bottom of this handle, the square bit of the handle opposed to the arrow at the top, then I can go ahead and instantly add some base height to this if I want to. Or if I grab the arrow at the top, I can go ahead and adjust my shape height. And I get that instant feedback that I need so I can be sure that I get everything layered up the way I want it to be. And that looks pretty nice right there. Now, obviously, I don't want all of this extra information outside of the areas that I want to actually use as windows for this 3D clip art to sit into. So what I want to do is go to my modeling tab, 
hold down my shift key and select these three different areas. Select my level, right click on that, change, go to my clipping mode and click apply. And you'll see that automatically in my 3D view, I've gone ahead and clipped all that off. That looks pretty neat. Now we can go ahead and do the rest of our layout. Let's go back to our clip art tab again. Let's bring in our bright ideas light bulb. And to me, if I rotate this around and I put it inside of my window properly, you'll see that it actually looks a little bit like a sun. So we'll just go ahead and I'll rotate that all the way around. I really encourage you to go ahead and look at the clip art that you get with your software and try to re-envision it and use it for all kinds of different purposes. There we have a nice sun poking out of our clouds. Down here in this bottom window, let's go ahead and go to our objects again. And we'll scroll through that. And we have the ship's wheel. So let's double click on that one. And we'll position it down here in this window here and we'll scale it down. Now, of course, a ship's wheel wouldn't be wouldn't look all that great unless we had some water behind it. And again, we don't have a piece of water clip art. So let's think of what we can do with the clip art that we have. Ah, this linen fold will look really good. Let's double click on that. Let's just go ahead and put that down here. We can rotate that around. So let's put zero on our keyboard to rotate that around. That kind of looks like water. So if we scale it down a little bit and put it in here where it belongs. If we faded that I would have been at the top, I think we'd have something that looked a lot like waves. So let's just put that where it belongs. In our 3D view, we're going to go ahead and select that piece of 3D content, bring up our floating properties dialog. And what you'll see here is that when we go ahead and we add some fade to this, so let's turn on some fade. Let's set our anchor points, one here and one there. It'll automatically fade to 50%, but we can go ahead and use this slider to instantly go ahead and change that to be what we need it to be to look right. We need to bring up the, uh, the ship's wheel a little bit. So let's just go ahead and we'll grab that handle here and we can pull that up just a little bit through that. And there we have it. That looks pretty nice. Let's just close that down. The last piece of the puzzle is I like to put something over here. So let's go back to objects and people and see if we can find a book maybe that we can put in there in that area. We'll size this down to fit. I think that's going to look pretty nice right there in the middle. So let's go ahead now and make sure that we have all of our shape heights proper for this. So what I'd like to do is I don't want this to cut any deeper than a quarter inch in my material. So to do that and to help me sort of visually see all this stuff, what I'm going to do is go to my modeling tab and I'm going to add in a plane. Okay. So we have a basic plane and it's been clipped because it's on the clipping level. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this level, go up into my properties here. So this is going to change the properties for my level. And I'm going to give it a starting base height of minus 0.25 because I don't want anything on this level to be any deeper than 0.25 an inch. And you see how everything in the 3D view is now sunk down below my modeling plane. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and use the reference that I have here. You'll see that some of the objects that are above the modeling plane are a different color. So if I go ahead and select this, I can go ahead and Shrink that down to fit just below that. Looks pretty nice. And if I want to, I can go ahead and add some detail if I want to, some shape height, the different things. So same with the, the sun here. I'll need to go ahead and click on that and drop that down just a little bit. You see, as I come up through that modeling plane, that zero plane, things change. So I just need to put that just below. That looks great. Same with my book. Let's do the same thing. I'll just kind of slide it below there. Looks good. And last but not least, let's go ahead and have a look at the ship's wheel and see if we can add a bit more shape height to that one. Let's see what we have. 
Now you'll see how powerful that live model composition is when you're creating an intricate layout like this. Now let's go ahead and open up the file that you're going to get with this project if you choose to download it. So here's your final file. And as you can see, we've put in the adventure map uh, sheets as well. That way you have everything in one place. And all the tools that we use to create the adventure map are available in vCarve. And here is the actual frame that we created a minute ago, except for we decided to turn this into a double-sided job. We needed the second side so we could create a pocket so that we could set this on top of the adventure map, or if we wanted to, we needed a little bit of pocket as well. So we could put a, a picture in the back along with a backing board if you wanted to use it for that. Now, because the intention is to set this on top of the uh, adventure map, then it's going to cover up some of the information that you need. And so what we're going to need to do is we need to indicate which way is north on our map. So we've decided to pocket out a hole in the bottom of this so we could insert in a brass compass. Now, if you don't want to do that, we've also included over here some vectors that you could go ahead and V-carve in that area. Again, indicating that this is the north direction on your map. Now, if you have a look at our 3D view, you'll see that's the same layout that we had created a minute ago. And if we go ahead and bring up our toolpaths tab, we can look at the toolpaths for this. Here we have the dowel hole toolpath, a 3D roughing toolpath, a 3D finishing toolpath, the compass pocket. So if you're going to put a compass in there, you'll need to adjust that compass pocket to fit the compass that you purchase. Again, we're thinking ahead a little bit here. In the next video, we're going to show you how to create a sundial using the tools in Aspire 11.5. And that'll sit nicely on top of this stack of projects. And then we have some text on the front that adds a nice little bit of flavor to it. So let's go ahead and preview all those toolpaths. And you'll see again that we can actually see our tool and our 3D view going on and cutting all that. So you could get a good sense of what this is gonna look like in the end if there's any issues that we have. That looks pretty good. Let's just go ahead and close that down. Let's flip over to our second side and let's go ahead and take a look at those three tool paths. Again, we've got a dowel holes that we're gonna cut into our spoil board, put in our dowels, then we'll flip over our job and put it down. Now I would like to point out that one of those dowel holes is in the center of your job. And that's important because I was a bit worried that if the center half circle ended up popping out, I wanted it to be able to be supported by something and that dowel would do the trick. So let's go ahead and preview the tooling. You'll see what's gonna happen here. We have that lip, so it'll sit on top of the adventure map. And this piece in the center, we're actually gonna break out or cut out so we can see the map through that. Then we're gonna pop out these tabs and do a bit of sanding, insert it in our compass, and we have a nice top for our previous project that we created in Cut2D. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in the labs cutting.
This frame has so much potential, I really think you're going to enjoy customizing it. The version 11.5 featured covered in this project video are the new live composition, making creating a nice layout of your components easier and more intuitive, twiddling during toolpath preview to help better identify tooling issues. Some other notable software features include level properties to drop the modeling plane down a quarter inch, a two-sided part to create the lip to accept the adventure map or a photo. Version 11.5 allows us to move 3D content around to create a composition in real time, which is a game changer for those creating projects like this. It gives you instant visual feedback and it is so intuitive to use. I hope that my interesting use of the free 3D content included with your VKR software has inspired you so the next time that you want to use your free clip art, you might look at it a little bit differently. If you missed the adventure map that we created in Cut2D, be sure to take time to watch the first video in this series and discover even more exciting new features included in your VCarve desktop or Pro version 11.5 software. Are you curious about some of the new or updated features that we have included in Aspire 11.5? Check out the next video in this series where we create a working sundial using some of these new and updated features. We have done lots of work under the hood with regards to hardware acceleration that many features of your software will benefit from. You should see things like faster rendering and file importing. Of course, this depends on the hardware you have in your laptop or PC. We can't wait to see what you make with your Vectric software. Tag us on your favorite social platform or create a post in the Vectric user forum. We want to see what you're making. Until next time, keep making fun stuff and be safe.